Good morning. How are you today? It is gorgeous out. It's about 70 degrees. I don't think we'll see many days like this. And I, I'm out early because uh, there's talk of rain and I didn't want to miss what a wonderful day this is. Uh, charge my batteries <laughs> to write intense things in my briefs. So, uh, there was a show when I was a kid. I think the name of the host was Funt. I want to say Alan Funt. And one of his episodes was children say the damnedest things or whatever was permissible to stay on, say on TV. And comes to mind is uh, Associate Justice Thomas, who in the argument before the Supreme Court over the admission policies of Harvard and another university said he didn't know what diversity was, what that meant. Now, these guys are never conscious of their own circumstance. There was a time when if a white man wanted to marry a black woman, that was misogynation and not allowed, criminal even. And we had a famous case, the Loving case in Virginia about that. And the same goes the other way. If a white woman married a black man, that would also be sanctioned. And I, I don't say this critically, I say this as a result of a freedom of rights that would have denied blacks and whites an opportunity to be diverse in a nation that speaks about freedom for all. And Justice Thomas enjoys that right, if you will, that is not to be discriminated against for the fact that he is a black man married to a white woman. And I don't see anything wrong about drawing up this parallel between what he says about, I don't know what diversifying means, I don't know what a diverse uh, school attendance is, and I don't know his history of schools and so forth, but it's rare for any of us, with or without color or any distinguishing remark that makes us think, how do we make up for past discrimination? Uh, but even if you don't have these demarcations, everybody has helped along the way. Loans, family, hard work, extra jobs, uh, excellence in school and stuff like that. Uh, handy with uh, materials, you get opportunities that way. So now, is it evenly distributed? No. And in the case of, say, Harvard, to choose as, I think, the best example, a private school, they were attacked because, based on the SAT scores, invitations to apply were sent out. And so white males had scored uh, 13, 10 or better. Asian males had scored 1370 or better. That difference between white males and Asian males was part of the argument that Harvard is unfair and how it chooses its uh, student body. Now, I don't know what the score was for African Americans, but I do know that uh, I, I do know that they were admitted as part of this same system. So the question and it's almost a Zen question, is how do you have a diverse population in a school if you don't make some judgments about how you get people to participate? Now, the argument to just sort of close your eyes and blindly go forward means that you're going to have, I guess, a more homogenous class. When I was... Uh, applying to Columbia Law School, there was, a, there was a question about affirmative action, which is what we call it. The notion that uh, whites in particular are at the starting block of opportunity ahead of others, including African Americans in particular, because of the promise we made that all were equal and they weren't. Not even when we got to the 13th Amendment and the 14th Amendment and the 15th Amendment. So, and the 13th Amendment talks about badges of slavery. 
So is it a badge of slavery if you don't get an equal opportunity because the entire pipeline in which you're cast, given the discrimination, particularly of the times, means you're not going to get an equal break. So it did occur to me while I was applying to law school that affirmative action meant some spots would go to others. And if I was uh, close to, I don't know what number it would be, uh, would I find that I didn't get into law school because of affirmative action? And I thought, well, that's a policy I agree with. So if you got, you know, an investment in that philosophy, you have to live the philosophy. But the year that I applied to law school, there had been, I don't know if longer, but there had been a discrimination against women uh, getting to law school. They were thought to be the wives that accompanied the husbands going to law school, and then frequently, and more frequently than, than is statistically possible, uh, the women, the wives, who helped their husband get through law school found themselves abandoned. So there were women that had amazing scores because for years they had to be better in order to go forward because of the sexism, the discrimination against women. And at the law, there was the belief when I went to law school that women couldn't try cases. How could they possibly do that? And I'm here to tell you that they can play, play, play cases quite well, including the one that's being tried by the Attorney General's, not the Attorney General's office, the DA's office in Manhattan right now against the uh, Trump family plus its financial officer. There's a woman trying that case. That's a huge case. And we have just up the street the Attorney General who has also charged the same family, also a woman. So we, we have abundant proof that women uh, can perform and do perform and are extraordinary as lawyers and as trial lawyers. So it appeared that I was more likely to be edged out of the first year class by women than by affirmative action for African Americans. And all this is to say it's a pretty complex piece of business. And I, about 20 years ago, it was uh, it's shorter than that because the prediction was uh, Sandy Day O'Connor said, well, in 20 years, uh, we won't need affirmative action. And I think that was, that was a good faith hope. And it might have been true if, if we didn't have such abiding discrimination in this nation. All we have to do is look at the last several years. Look at the reason that Biden ran for president because of what happened in Charlottesville and how uh, racially twisted and anti-Semitic and everything else that was. So where's our progress? And you have to make progress before you can say we don't need affirmative action because everybody's at the starting block, the starting block of opportunity. So we have a Supreme Court that denied women the identity and recognition they deserve as people, as equals, as in the Declaration of Independence that only said all men are created equal. And we, we have this situation in which how do we continue that? And the court appears ready, five or six out of the nine, to end that. Well, this is a parallel attack on the rights and liberties of individuals, of the notion that diversity is the hallmark by which we measure that all men and women are equal before the law. So it does appear that the Supreme Court will issue an opinion that compromises the opportunity of African Americans based on a skillful arrangement of alleged discrimination involving Asian Americans. With all due apology to Asian Americans, uh, the whole thing is suspect. 
nor can we ignore the fact that the district court found no discrimination in the trial of the matter. So here we have the facts apparently found by a judge to be right and to find no fault with affirmative action as practiced by Harvard. And the Supreme Court is going to reach into the situation and declare that they have to stop these policies. They can't even mention affirmative action. So America is becoming a place for white supremacists, male only, and uses what argument it can, however facetiously it invokes that argument, so that they can diminish the rights of blacks. Now, there are lots of other things going on, but uh, this is the only thing that really struck me as worth thinking about today. Because, you know, there's a reaction saying, affirmative action, why should you give them an advantage? Well, the truth is that the SAT scores are only one of the things, and the SAT score is something, uh, you know, given people's background, some will test better, test better and some will not because of their cultural background. And since it's only one of a number of things that is looked at, it seems to me that we should not be denying any tool that might help us make a diverse community. And I guess only Justice Thomas will be unable to know what diversity means. I offer, given what I assume is his IQ, an alternative explanation. He's a bigot. He's discriminating against people who need opportunities like he had. Opportunities that were based on his accomplishment, but did not ignore the fact that he was a person of color. And we as a society have to realize that we have institutions that tend toward bigotry, tend toward discrimination. And I am talking about a lot of police forces across the country, and in recent years we know which ones they are. So we have to do more, not less, to gauge how we treat people equally. And are we going to make that 20-year deadline that Sandra Day O'Connor mentioned? Maybe not, given where we are today, but the test should be, have we reached it before we can say we don't need affirmative action. We finally got everybody to the starting post. So that's what I'm thinking today in this uh, wonderful <laughs> fall uh, occasion in the <laughs> Cathedral of Trees. So good luck. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.